Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Arc Map Tutorial Series. In this episode we'll be talking about level optimization, otherwise known as level streaming, and what it does to optimize load times both in the editor and in the game itself. Alright, so I just briefly want to talk about what level streaming does within the editor and what it can do for the game itself. Um, both in the editor and in the game, it produces faster load times. In the game, it gives us higher FPS, as well as allowing the player to actually play on larger maps and not completely destroy a computer. In the editor, it allows us larger maps, obviously, but it also enables us to do a little bit of management. Like you can see in my top right corner, I'm not the neatest level designer. I have just so far clicked and dragged things onto the map. It's not really sorted outside of one tiny mesh. So level streaming will allow me to sort things into categories and locations so I don't really have to worry about that. Before we get too far into level streaming we need to talk about how Steam uses the Arc dev kit when you're uploading a mod. Any mod that you create needs to be in the mods folder in your content browser. You can see generic mod shows an example. The center was originally a modified map before they added it to the vanilla game. With that in mind, I've created a folder for this map. I haven't saved anything, I've just created the folder and moved it here. If you have any trouble moving the, f the map here, so if you created your map on the just standard asset window, you can come up here to Window, go to Content Browser, and just open up your second Content Browser. From there you can navigate to any part that you want, and you can click and drag. I recommend clicking and dragging into the parent folder. Unreal Engine just seems to be a little bit funky and can sometimes mess up if you're dragging into a blank folder. So I recommend clicking and dragging into the parent folder where you want it to go. Once we have everything in a folder inside the mods folder, we can start to create some levels that we would use for level streaming. So we just right click in this folder and we're going to create a level. We're going to have a few levels, but the first one is going to be static meshes. But we also want to signify that this is a certain subsection of the map. When you're doing a larger map, you can't just have all of your static meshes on one sub-level. The more levels you create, the better for your game. The more it optimizes, the easier it is for the player. You don't want to load every level at once. You just want to load certain levels while you're using them. So I want to signify that this is a small island in the bottom left. So I'm just going to put A1. That's A1, not AL under my static meshes and I have this level here. Right now it's just a blank level. I could open it and create a landscape if I wanted to, I'm not going to, but it's the same level that we started with when we created our main level back in the day. And we're going to create a few more of these um, just to show the proof of concept, but in reality I really want to drive home the point that the more of these sub-levels or child levels that you create, the better performance you'll have both in the editor and in the game itself when you first export the map. So here I have the foliage for A1, that's the trees and the rocks really anything that the player can harvest, sort of. It's everything that we're painting on with a paintbrush. I might do a few choice placements of individual assets, but I'll need to make sure that I select this foliage level if I do that. I also want to have dino spawns. and I'm still signifying that it's on A1, this first island. And I want to have rivers 
and waterfalls for A1. So right now I have four levels that I've created. I've not saved any of them, but I have four sub-levels that I've created. None of them exist in our main world yet. That's totally fine. We'll talk about what we need to do to make that happen. So I'll go ahead and save. I just want to save all of these levels before we do anything with them. So now that they're all saved, we have them in our second content browser. I'm just going to drag this onto my other screen because we don't actually need it. We need another window. This window is the levels window. But before we can do too, too much with this levels window, we need to actually adjust some world settings here. So primarily the, the first thing that we're really going for here, or there's two things that we need to do here. The first thing that we need to do in the world settings is go to where it says world. And we need to check this thing that says enable world composition. This is going to let us spawn in other levels. And you see when I check mark that, it added these other maps onto my levels tab. It's worth noting what some of the other things here do in case you ever need to change it. This kill Z is the bottom limit of any actor that falls down. So if you have a dino that glitches through the map and falls, rather than rendering it for the player for the duration of their game, once it hits the Z coordinate, it kills the object, deletes the asset, and the player doesn't have to render it for the rest of the game. So, the other thing that you want to check, and this is if you haven't done this before, where we talked about it when we got the game to play, is we just want to set our default camera position actor, and this is just the camera actor that we dragged into the, and this is just the camera actor that we dragged into the scene before. That's why we just needed to have one in there. When there's only one, it sets itself. When there's more than one, as in like you have multiple spawn zones, you have things like a reflection or something like that, you need to designate this. So while we're here, we'll just go ahead and designate our camera actor as the default camera position actor. That's everything that we need to do in world settings. Now all of our work is going to be done in our levels and our scene outlier. I actually want to drag this down here. So I have these five levels, and I have everything on our main level right now. So this includes some of our static meshes. I have a few basalt columns, creating a water amphitheater for a waterfall, which we'll do next episode. And a couple of rocks, and a couple of mountains. So these are all things that I would consider a static mesh. Uh, and with the exception of these mountains here, everything is going to fall under this A1 island. So if I zoom out to this landscape, we see that we have a few islands. I'm just going ahead and labeling some of the islands. I'll probably split up some of the bigger islands in terms of these maps. But for an island this small in the bottom left here, I really only need one loading mesh here. So, I have this basalt column, so I have these meshes, and I want to move them into a different map, because I want it to load faster, I don't want to render them all the time, there might be some time I'm doing some work on just painting this island and I don't want to see the meshes I want to be able to paint the island without the foliage and the rocks and and all the static meshes and the dinosaurs spawning like, I just want to focus on the map and I don't want anything else this is where level streaming is going to come in handy okay I had a bit of a crash there um, if it ends up loading all four levels in at once when you enable world settings enable world composition just close down the project and reopen it and it'll fix itself.
Now, uh, I actually forgot one slight thing. Um, we want to disable enable world based rebasing. Um, this will actually make your assets jump across the screen. So under the world tab of the world setting, just click this arrow here and then make sure that this is unchecked. What that'll do is if your assets are showing and, and jumping and moving all over the map like crazy when you uh, make a level visible like this, uh, that stops that from doing that because it recenters the origin of the map based on the camera position that we set earlier. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure it's unchecked and you'll be alright. So what we're going to do is we're going to move things into our loading levels. So this is my active level. I'm just selecting all of these. These are all on the main level. I want to copy these. That's control C. Or I can hit right click, edit, copy. Then I'm going to go to static meshes A1. So this is our first island. And I'm going to hit make sure that this is our default level. It's double clicked. It's our selected level. And I'm going to hit control V. And you can see that it put the meshes in the level. So in order to prove this, I'm just going to go to our persistent level, our main level. Oh, I'm sorry. Set this as our active level. Select all these basalt columns, these two rocks, and I'm going to hit delete. And you can see that they've disappeared. We're left with this standard island. But when I hit this toggle level visibility, we see that static mesh A1 puts all of those static meshes back there. They have all the same properties. But anytime we're dragging a rock in on this island now, we want to make sure that static meshes A1 is our level. So if I go down here to my content browser, and I'm looking for like a really fancy rock here or something like that. Let's see. Bioluminescence curvy thick B rock. Let's see what this is. Wow, she's a thick beast, isn't she? But as we can see here in my view options, I have display actor count on. Our static meshes went up. So if I want this for whatever reason, I want this rock to be in our level and it's gonna it's just gonna be here on the beach doing its thing and I'm not sure why but it's there there it is and when I disable this if I want to work on painting this beach more I can just hide and show this this is a way that really helps us in the editor so now if I want to come to our landscape, we can come up here and click this, or we can hit Shift 3. And that's going to load up our landscape tab once it does, because the Arc Dev Kit is quite slow. Alright, so we're here in our landscape thing, and we want to paint, and we want to paint this rock. Normally we can't do that, because it's covered by these static meshes. I mean, we could do it, but we wouldn't be able to see what we're doing. So, you know, I'm up here, and I really want this cliff face to stick out. Well, now I'm able to do that, and we're, we can see the places where it overlaps we've actually been able to go through and edit. So that's a really big advantage for the editor itself. So we're going to do something similar for the foliage. And the foliage is a little bit different, so Shift 4 to open our foliage tab. This is our foliage tab for the static mesh level. We want to go on our persistent level. And we can see that we have all of our foliage so we can select this a few ways. We can do the lasso and just click and drag. Yeah, I got everything. How exciting. Or we can go back to place mode and just click a single tree. And what this will do is select all foliage on the level, which is great for us right now um, because we've only ever placed foliage on this, this island. 
just keep in mind that if you place foliage on, say, a place across the map on a different island, it would also be selected. But for right now, we're good. We don't... We don't have that, so... We have all of our foliage, and we're gonna select all of it with our lasso tool, just in case. I'm gonna do that method just to just to show how it works. We've got all these trees and rocks and everything. One more rock up here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to this drop down list. And we're going to go to Foliage A1, and we're going to hit Copy to Selected Level. Yep. And then, on our Persistent Level, we're just going to hit Delete. Oh, no, 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 I do not want that. I want all these trees and stuff. I'm going to delete all of them. But on our foliage level, they're still there. So now we're left with everything that we had before level streamed so that A, it'll load faster, and we'll get into what we actually need to place. There's a thing we need to place when we're on an island, it only loads that island, and when we're in a cave, it only loads the cave. We'll get into that later, probably during our caves episode. But most importantly, for right now, we've created an environment where we're able to edit our map and do the things that we need to do. The so next episode, we're going to create a little pond up here and then have water come down and drop off into this amphitheater uh, that we've created. So we need all this foliage and everything to be out of the way so we can focus on what we actually need to do, which is create a river and a waterfall and make it a fast process that doesn't take long because everyone knows the Arc Dev Kit takes long enough. So with that in mind, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell, all that jazz, and hopefully we'll see you next week.